Okay, we're moving on to the third last topic in this course, not that I'm counting, obviously. Um, we're on moving on to control flow today. Um, it's a notoriously difficult topic to explain. I've found it difficult in the past, but I've had a bit of practice making other videos and stuff. So hopefully I'll be, be able to explain it okay. Um, quite a short video, actually. It's probably quite simple as well um, at the end of it. So just, yeah, bear with me. So um, let's just define what flow control is. This is quite a key concept, and it's sort of obvious, really, but it's quite difficult to define. So program flow is the order the code is executed in and it's completely controlled, it's manipulated by the programmer although choices made by the person using the program will influence the flow. So it is literally flow, it, it's it's easy to visualize it as sort of water, the water flowing yeah in a stream, it's, it's the execution path going through the program and like I said it's quite difficult to explain. Um, Hopefully it'll make sense in a minute. So I like to think of it, and I don't know if everyone uses this sort of phrase, but I like to think of it as there being three main building blocks of code that control how the program flows. And the first of which, and the simplest, is sequence. And a sequence block um, here, each line is directly executed after the previous line. So it really works in sequence. Once one line finishes being executed, the next one gets executed, etc. It's a bit like how the um, interpretation translation happens. Um, as we looked at in the previous video. Um, so what this means is it means that every line between the start and the end, so this is like an example of sequence, um, the first line in this sequence block um, precedes the next line being executed, it just goes line by line really. And we can represent it by a flowchart, um, simply like this, just where it goes, passes through each process block uh, line by line in the sequence. And if we, um, I guess we could represent it in um, pseudocode if you wanted. Like I say, I, I talked about pseudocode a couple of videos ago and I mentioned that it's not really that important how you do pseudocode. There's a few things I like to do. So we could do um, a really simple one, number equals 10. That's what I've always used for equals in pseudocode. It doesn't really matter. You could do it as an equals or whatever. And we could do um, add 5 to num and then we could do output uh, num. I mean, we'd hopefully get, if we converted this to program code, we would get 15. So that's just a bit of a pseudo code representation. Um, yeah, if we move on to looking at the second block, slightly harder to understand, but again, I'm sure you would have used this. If you've done controlled assessments or programmed in high level programming languages, this should, you should have used this really. You may not have thought of the theory behind it necessarily, but should really have used these blocks. Um, the second one is selection and here the program's flow is determined by if and case statements and they're called conditional statements because a condi condition is met and depending on the conditions the flow path is selected meaning that not every line in the code is executed. So I mentioned before that in sequence every line is executed. In selection not every line is executed. Some lines are chosen to be executed. Um, so if we first look at um, a flow chart representation, I apologize for white background um, but it doesn't really matter necessarily. So if you think of it as flow, and please bear with me in my graphics tablet, um, if we have a flow here, um, if you just imagine this is the way it's being executed, oh that's absolutely terrible. You can see here that that's the path of the execution and what that means is that is the program has been run and it means that the selection first, the first selection is being that it's going to be false as opposed to true. So this bit never gets executed. This bit never gets executed. This, the lines after this bit don't get executed because the, the choice has been taken elsewhere. So you get false and get false again, meaning that the other true bit also isn't executed. So it's really, um, I like to think of it as the code weaving its way or, or the um, execution weaving its way through the code. That's just how I like to visualize it. I and mean, then if we've got, we've got our example here, um, test equals 5, if test equals 5, so this is an example of if statement, this is a case statement, um, if test equals 5, print test pass, so this bit uh, runs because it that's correct, that's true, but this bit never gets to run because it doesn't even look that far, it will skip this bit out, it won't execute this bit because it knows that it's not right, it, it, there's no point, in it. it's already, the selection's already occurred and we know that it equals 5 so we print test pass, test fail will never get printed. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, again, we could represent this in pseudocode. Be very similar to before, I guess. Um, if I just do an example here. Okay, so I struggled to think of an example. Um, I was thinking 
Facebook, they do this age limit, don't they? So we could do um, age, and we could do it another way, is 12. Um, and we do if uh, age is less than 13, deny access or something, I don't know, deny it. Access. So if we're doing like a website, you've got to be 13 to join, and then else we'll do else allow access. That's a very simple um, pseudocode. We talked about pseudocode before. Um, it's just uh, just a very sort of basic plan of how you're going to do code. So the final building block is iteration. And iteration just means repeating or looping. We use looping a lot in computing, computer science, and loop statements repeat until a condition is met. So there's two main types of loop, while and for. Um, for is really, um, for is really um, a set amount of times, and while is more, could be infinite really. You want, Infinite loops are like the worst thing for a programmer because they just crash the program. Um, but while loops, they're sort of more open. They keep, they keep repeating until the decision is met, basically. Until the condition is met, I should say. And um, I should say that this, um, this line, the way it's denoted is through this um, a backwards arrow on a flowchart, and this just this will just keep looping and looping and looping until the condition is met and the program ends. And this is like an example of it, a, a password program. Basically, it keeps looping. We've got a while loop here. Um, if it was a for loop, it wouldn't really work because it means after you try the password wrong a couple of times, it will let you in. A while loop will keep doing it until the password is entered correctly and then you'll be accessed, you'll be allowed access to the program. Um, so that's today's video done. Quite simple really, I hope. I'm um, looking at slightly more um, on algorithms next such as data types and booleans and constants. Lots of good stuff. Um, so hopefully you'll join me for that video and yeah, I'll see you then.